Okay, so um, Selitoli's question, what about those who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit? Okay, I think there are a couple of questions, right? One of the questions, first question is, what's the difference between John's baptism and baptism of the Holy Spirit? So, um, so John, um, John's ministry, John the Baptist's ministry was to uh, point uh, to Jesus. That was one of the things. He also preached a uh, baptism of repentance. Right? Um, he he uh, announced that the kingdom of God uh, is at hand. He announced uh, that they should uh, repent from all the things that they, they were wrongful, wrongfully indulged in, you know, in, indulging in. Um, like uh, if you look at John chapter 1, um, I think John chapter one and verses um, yeah verses nineteen onwards um, talks about you know what he was doing. People are asking him right uh, about his identity. Who are you? Uh, he says I'm not the Christ. And then are you Prophet Elijah? They say no. He says no. And then he says you know this is the one I'm uh, make straight the way of the Lord. So he's preparing the people and um, uh, you know kind of leading them to repentance. Um, if you look at, I think Luke chapter one, or is it Luke chapter three? Yeah, looked at Luke chapter three. Um, he talks about, uh, you know, uh, if you have two tunics, give to one. Looked up to three and verse eleven. So, um, you know, he was uh, asking them. He was telling them what they should not do. You know, about uh, even tax collectors. Uh, tax collectors came and asked him, you know, teacher, what shall we do? Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Verse thirteen, verse fourteen, uh, and so on. So, um, so he he was actually, you know, teaching this. And the baptism that he did was in water, uh, and so people would repent you know it, as a symbol as a sign of their repentance that saying that okay i no more i don't want to live the sinful life so it was um, you know something that uh, the, the lord jesus also you know uh, uh, talk, talked about and said you know you go preach the gospel baptizing them in the name of the father son and holy spirit so um so but john the baptist did this and uh, uh, so how different is it, is it from the baptism of the holy spirit i think we've We've seen it, right? Uh, we see that a baptism of the Holy Spirit is about the Holy Spirit filling in, falling upon, uh, being poured upon, uh, and uh, on a believer, filling that person with power. And uh, you know, we see some supernatural gifts being released in and uh, express the Holy Spirit expressing uh, Himself through the believer in these ways, right? So that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's how different it is from John's baptism, right? Uh, I hope that uh, answers no, Zelitoli, the first question. Yes, first time, first time, first time. Um, yeah, right. And the second one is, what about those who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit? Will they flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like healing, words of uh, knowledge, uh, wisdom, etc.? Well, God can definitely, uh, you know, uh, move through. Um, but we see that this is this is the biblical pattern that we see. You know, that this is a biblical pattern that those they were filled with the spirit, and the spirit enabled them and expressed himself, uh, express uh, himself uh, through them in these manners. Well, uh, in in a believer, you know, can God speak or work through a believer? Uh, I believe it is possible, right? Work through a believer, uh, maybe you know. Uh, speak to a believer give a prophetic word well uh, it, it is it is possible but this is the biblical pattern you know there could be exceptions you know i've heard of people saying you know uh, god you know speaks in these ways uh, but this is the biblical pattern and also we must understand that um, you know like uh, we see in paul's case you know we don't see anything supernatural mentioned there you know, but he was baptized in the spirit. It says that he, he rose up and he was baptized. So, you know, when we, we it could be something very simple as that, you know, as a, a person, uh, you know, maybe not, uh, you know, experiencing anything, but they are filled with the spirit. And eventually they, you know, uh, start uh, praying in tongues or the other gifts of the spirit, you know, as they desire and cooperate with the spirit. That's very important as well. So that is also, you know, possible. So uh, the thing is, maybe, you know, uh, uh, you know, your question, uh, I kind of understand, you know, maybe that person feels that, okay, I didn't, I didn't experience anything, 
you know uh, at time but these gifts are being manifested I, but i didn't experience anything um, so that is possible you know being people being filled and uh, well physically you know didn't experience anything but, but they are filled with the spirit right because this is the lord jesus is the one who baptizes and uh, we receive the baptism by faith okay so in simple obedience we just believe and we receive and then that's it right but it is available for everyone these gifts are available for everyone so we can desire and expect and uh, there's nothing weird about these gifts uh, it's it's from god so we know that uh, he will not give us something that is harmful for us you know when we ask for a bread he will not give us a stone you know ask for a fish he will not give us a scorpion or a serpent you he's a good father he gives good gifts uh, something that benefits uh, us builds us up and benefits the church right okay does that help uh, zelitoli okay awesome okay any any other questions um based on what we have seen till now what we have learned till now any other questions okay okay yeah divya go ahead i just project this yeah yeah yes pastor i just wanted to ask regarding uh, the filling of the holy spirit as we were discussing is it always followed by uh, speaking in tongues or like it is just for those three instances as you have mentioned yeah so we see the pattern like in all five we see that there is something you know uh, uh, with regard to tongues uh, we see at least in four cases we can say for sure that uh, you know there were tongues and of course in samaria we don't we know we don't know what happened supernaturally but it was something supernatural so uh, so the, we can infer that they ended up you know tongues was something which was common to all five um now let's say in today's you know let's say today's today's scenario some there's a believer and uh, you know we are ministering to that believer and uh, we're saying okay you know uh, this is something that uh, god has for you right so would the person uh, all you know uh, pray in tongues then and there well maybe maybe not you know so sometimes there could be certain things uh, maybe certain certain blockages you know sometimes or maybe sometimes that person doesn't desire at all or, or it could be another manifestation it could be prophecy that happens first right uh, the person begins to see something you know visualize or hear something uh, a prophetic um, you know vision um, or a word word of knowledge that comes and the person shares that so that is possible as well right but the thing is we need to um, uh, uh, the reason i'm answering in this manner is that you know tongues is available for everyone but not everyone you know begins to speak in tongues but when we see in the bible we see that you know 90% or 95% we see clearly mentioned that you know tongues uh, it, it did happen right so so there's no reason why we should uh, not follow that same pattern or minister in that pattern okay but we you know we need to um, also you know not make people feel guilty or condemn them if they're not praying in tongues you know they're not like second class believers just because you know they they didn't start praying in tongues you know the god uh they are they are uh, you know as valuable uh, to them to god as another person who is not praying in tongues so um so that's you know uh, that's the thing but there's no reason why a person should not desire and you know uh, begin to speak in tongues when they're filled with the spirit yeah um so that's the thing yeah like um, yeah personally uh, i think uh, when i look at my life you know i i was filled in the spirit uh, and i experienced the power of god supernaturally power of god and but i went on you know, just worshiping him and that um, just me and another believer we were just in prayer and we went and and we just went on worshiping over and over and that, i think that went on for about i don't know two hours or three hours we just went on worshiping and uh, you know singing and uh, and a lot of tears crying and confessing and so on um so i i believe that that was something different you know i i, I know that i was filled with the spirit of god experienced uh, you know god in a powerful way uh, but i didn't really start praying in tongues then praying in tongues came much later when somebody actually taught 
from scripture saying, hey, it's for you. Because till then, I thought it's for everyone and everyone else and not me. You know, uh, I wasn't uh, uh, against the idea uh, of praying in tongues because, because a lot of my friends uh, did pray in tongues. So it wasn't something that was, you know, uh, that, was, uh, that I was afraid of or I didn't want it or anything like that. But I didn't really desire. Right? Uh, and so we know that, uh, you know, Paul talks about us desiring, expecting, uh, and uh, and eventually walking in it, right? Um, but we see, you know, like Cornelius uh, saying, sovereignly, the Spirit of God being poured out, and then people, you know, with that sense of expectancy, because they were all there waiting to hear, okay, we want to hear about God. It was there with that sense of expectancy, I want God, I want whatever God has for me. And they were filled and they started praying in tongues. Same with the believers also, the disciples also, 120. You know, they were in one accord, in prayer, you know, desiring God, expecting, um, you know, for uh, desiring or hungering after him. And we see this happening. So, yeah, that expectancy needs to be there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll, if, if there are more questions, you know, you can always put it in that link. Right, um, and I think uh, a lot of questions are being answered. Uh, what we see in that link, uh, but we will take some time to answer those as well. Specifically, you can always put that. Okay, so uh, about indwelling and baptism, you know. So we know that when a person receives the Lord Jesus, he or she, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells. You know, there's no question about that, right? There's no question about that. We are able to call him Abba Father. We're all able to, you know, when we are born again, we are able to call. It's by the work of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and indwells us. Um, and uh, we see um, uh, some scriptures pointing to that, like, uh, uh, let's say, Galatians 4 and verse 6. And because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Okay, so it's it's by the spirit that we cry out, Abba Father. It's by the spirit that we know that um, you know we have the sensitivity, that conviction to sin, and so on. It's by the spirit of God. Um, another verse would be um, Ephesians. Also, um, if you look at Ephesians um, chapter one. Uh, verse 13, 14, right? In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, in, uh, you know, this seal meaning it's like a signet ring um, uh, and, and a, an official seal of ownership. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now, that word guarantee means earnest or a, a, a initial deposit, right? Um, and like how we purchase something in, in EMI, you know, and you finish paying that EMI and then you get the full, I mean, you, you already have it, right? But then it, you become, uh, you own it fully only when you, um, you know, finish that full payment. So here is like that initial deposit, the Holy Spirit's uh, presence, indwelling presence in us that, and then there will be the redemption, complete redemption of the purchase possession, you know, they will we will receive glorified bodies, and that's the completion of that whole salvation process, the redemption, All right? So, um, so, so the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, so what is difference? Right, the Holy Spirit indwells us, and uh, but the thing is, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He is upon us. He fills us. I'm just going down to uh, yeah, John chapter 4 and verse. So he fills us and uh, so that we can be witnesses and he can display his power through us. And it can be a blessing for others as well. Now, the Lord Jesus, uh, he explains it you know, in John chapter 4 in the conversation with the woman at the well. Okay, we see this, John chapter 4, 13 and 14. Uh, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, referring to the well, the physical water. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. 
but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay, so he's uh, referring to this water being in the believer like a fountain, okay, and uh, springing up into everlasting life, producing everlasting life. John chapter 7, uh, verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Okay, there in John chapter 4, verse 14, it's talking about a fountain of water. Okay, the material. You know, we see it's the same. The, 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 the way it ministers is different. There's a fountain and uh, springing up to everlasting life, and that person will never thirst again, right? John chapter 7, he says that out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, verse 39, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. You see the pattern, right? So Jesus glorified, you know, from uh, uh, dying on the cross, buried, uh, rising again, uh, glory, glory, being glorified and uh, ascending. And then the Holy Spirit will come being poured out, people who receive and, and he will flow out like a river and uh, that we know, you know, what happens to a natural river. A natural river brings life. Um, and it, it's a, you know, it's a blessing to those around. Civilizations spring up wherever the river flows, agriculture and, and so on. So, um, the the Lord Jesus is talking about the fountain as well as the uh, as well as the river. Okay. So, so the difference is this: that um, the river flowing out of the believer is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, you know, touching other people, um, ministering to other people. So the purpose we see is different. Indwelling presence, uh, it's the truth. Baptism, again, it's very equally true. Different purpose, and a different measure. Okay, the, we know the measure of water through a fountain, and we know it's different from the measure of water just flows out of a river and it is the same Holy Spirit. There's a different measure and there's a different purpose. Okay. Um, okay. You can actually go through. There are some other questions. You know, uh, what about 1 Corinthians 12? You know, he's talking about baptism into the spiritual body, right? Uh, because uh, sometimes these questions come. You know, didn't we all already receive the Holy Spirit? You know, why is there a need for another, you know, account or another encounter in this manner? Well, the Bible says so. The early church preached, uh, they, they taught it, and they led people, uh, prayed and ministered to people to receive that. The early church taught that. Plus, the, the Lord Jesus himself, you know, taught about that, about the fountain, about the, the river, uh, so different means and different purposes. So we see that. So there could be, you know, questions of, of that nature. Um, you know, what about us being baptized into the body? 1 Corinthians 12 talks about that. So there, uh, Paul specifically says that we are placed in the spiritual body of Christ. When we believe in, uh, in Christ, we are placed in the spiritual body of Christ. Okay. So, um, yeah, Zelitoli asked about baptism of John. So, um, so, you know, there could be three baptisms. One is baptism into the body of the spiritual body of Christ. We are placed, baptized. And the reference is 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. Then um, baptism in water, right? You believe, you you repent, you believe, and you're baptized in water. And it's it uh, symbolizes uh, being dead to yourself and being alive in Christ. You know, you are buried in uh, you know, in sin, and you are raised again to life, newness of life, and you identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, what we see in Romans chapter 6, right? Then Holy Spirit baptism, which is the work of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit being uh, filling the believer, um, uh, clothing the believer with power, and expressing himself through the believer in, in, in the signs, wonders, and miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you see, um, uh, uh, so we see these differences. Okay, so 
you know, uh, I think Divya asked the question, right? Uh, should there be tongues every time? Uh, well, the thing is, we see that's a common recurrence, and we let's study some more, we learn some more about um, uh, this gift of tongues. And uh, there's another publication, which is a wonderful benefit of speaking in tongues, which you could download, which talks about um, uh, the tongues, right? Okay, then the other question could be, uh, you know, is that the only evidence? Okay, I think that's uh, that's something that we would ask. You no, know, like, how do I know? Okay, is a person filled with the spirit? Now, here this person is not speaking. This person is speaking. There are two people here. Now, can I say there's one is filled, the other one is not? Well, we can't make that thing. But we also do know that is strong evidence to suggest that from what we saw, you know, all these instances in the Book of Acts that. Praying in tongues is one of the initial, initial gifts, right? The common gift that is released through the Holy Spirit, released by the Holy Spirit in the, in a believer, right? So, um, so it is an evidence, yes. But at the same time, we also know that there could be other uh, uh, gifts as well, right? So, so when we when we minister, we just you know ask the believer. You know, to say, okay, you know, in what other words, what other uh, ways is the Holy Spirit leading? You know, is He showing you something? Is He speaking to you something? Is any scripture being quickened? Uh, is He showing you any 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 picture, anything visual? Right? Is is the Holy Spirit prompting you? Is there a conviction of uh, something? You know, so in many ways, right? But we also encourage the believer to. You know, to speak out what are the words and what is that utterance that the Holy Spirit is putting in your heart. You know, you speak it out in faith. And what, uh, you know, what, what would be helpful is to, um, I think this happened the other day in uh, in the second year classroom. Like we were, uh, we were talking about, uh, I think it was at the beginning of the class, we were just talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit for some reason and, um, and said, you know, you know, why don't we, for those of you who not received, why don't you just go ahead and pray in tongues? Why don't you just go ahead and speak in tongues? And what is helpful is to understand that, you know, uh, these are, words are sounds, right? Words are sounds, and you think of it that way. Uh, the, here is a, 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 a drawing of the Holy Spirit, a prompting of the Holy Spirit to, to make a certain, uh, or speak a certain word, in other words, it is a sound, you know. You pronounce or you give voice to a sound, right? Because it's it's a it's an unknown language, you know. It could be a language of uh, of the earth, or an unknown language of people, or it could be a heavenly language. So uh, you know, um, so go ahead and make that, you know, what whatever the prompting is, go ahead and speak it out, or even sing it out, right? So uh, one person, you know, started. Uh, started praying in tongues for the first time we just started speaking and then you know, it just came as a flow and then uh, and then of course mics were on mute so he testified later saying that yes you know uh, for the first time i started uh, praying in tongues right so so it's it's a thing you know it's for uh, this is open this is for all believers tongues are an evidence um so there's no reason why we should not encourage ourselves or others to to receive Right? as we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for God to lead us in that as well. And we see that we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit is not going to force. Right? He's not going to force it upon us. He's not going to take control of our minds and of our will. That is, He's given it to us. We are free moral agents. That, that choice is ours to make. Right? But um, when you've... When you when you when you sense that he's putting in these words in your heart, you speak it out in your spirit. You sense these sounds in your spirit. You speak it out. Now, now that's that's the way to do it, right? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Um, okay. I, I thought I heard some um, somebody's mic being mute, unmuted. Okay. I think that's Isaac. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Let's. Um, Let's just continue. Okay, so here are some more questions. Okay, do I have to tarry or do I have to wait uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? 
okay so now because we read in the lord jesus said you know you wait you know, tarry in jerusalem till you are filled with power okay so uh, should we tarry you know uh, so you know in the in the church there are the traditions of tarrying in prayer right uh, waiting and, uh, and 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 believing god, god will do it but then not immediately right uh, so we need to wait and maybe a week or three days or week or whatever and then uh, you know that kind of belief was there in the church you know we need to wait we need to tarry well the thing is uh, well the lord can uh, the lord can do it immediately right and the lord did it immediately uh, in 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 all the instances that we saw there um we see in samaria we see in uh, in saul we see in uh, you know paul ministering to the uh, the 12 uh, disciples at ephesus so we see that um, it happens immediately right all we see it happening immediately so there's no reason why it should not happen immediately so we can believe god we don't have to tarry and wait and so on that and the tarrying is uh, you know for the uh, uh, for the disciples and it happened on the day of pentecost right so they had gathered for the feast for the harvest festival and and it happened on the day of pentecost so that was uh, the reason lord just jesus said you wait uh, and not many days from now you will be you will be filled acts chapter 1 he says that okay um the other question could be you know do i need to have hands laid on me okay should somebody lay hands on me and pray so that i receive the holy spirit uh, let's receive the baptism of the holy spirit and pray in and tongues and so on well um uh, well we see peter and john laying hands we see ananias laying hands uh, we see uh, paul laying hands and praying but we also see peter just preaching and uh, and uh, right before him there's a sovereign move of god the holy spirit fills the the uh, the people and they start praying in tongues so we know that both can happen okay like laying of hands uh, well if there are if there's no one to lay hands you know, and you're just alone in your room you can just pray believe god to fill you with the holy spirit and you can you know by faith begin to start praying in tongues as well just you know on your own right so it is possible for me that that's how it happened uh, like a friend prayed once and uh, uh, he taught us and then he prayed and nothing happened but then i was actually riding my bike i was i was working with this company i was going to visit a client i was riding the bike and in bangalore traffic and uh, i remember the exact route also it was a you know road called carbon road and i was going there and and right there in traffic i started praying in tongues i was wearing a full mask helmet and so on so well you don't need to have hands laid on you don't need to have uh, you know uh, people singing hallelujah hallelujah you don't need to have any of that uh, it's it's just uh, you know you believing you don't need to be in church you can be at home you can be in the kitchen you can be anywhere um, the lord will fill you and uh, you can begin to you know start praying in tongues okay uh, then the other question is do i need to be baptized in water you know what is the order i believe i repent i believe get baptized in water and then uh, you know uh, be being baptized by the holy spirit uh, is that the order uh, because i'm not baptized in water can i be you know baptized in the holy spirit well the thing is uh, you know we see in the case of saul we see in the case of um, peter ministering to uh, in cornelius house in both these cases it was all ulta right we see that um, they they believed they started praying in tongues and then peter saying you know uh, why should i forbid water right so so that can happen also so there's no set pattern right uh, yeah okay uh, does tongues always have to be understood okay now we're going with a little more details about the gift of tongues we will study in detail when we look at gift of tongues but Uh, just to answer this um you know there is uh, the gift of um, when it when it comes to the gift of tongues there is the uh, known language or you know in a sense the person praying in tongues does not know the language but it is a language that is already in use on the earth right for example it could be like uh, like me speaking uh, let's say nepali 
or me speaking in Nagamese. Right now, I know that's a language, which is um, uh, yeah. So Avadesh, uh, yes, right, laying on hands by the pastor. Wonderful, yeah. Um, so there are known, you know, that I know that that's a language already used by people, but I don't know the language. I've not learned the language, and so you know, if I start speaking in Nagamese, now that would be that would be it, right? That would be uh, uh, a language that I'm speaking on the earth, but uh, which is already on the earth, but I don't understand it. Okay, so I don't understand it. Um, so the thing is that um, uh, when we see in Acts chapter two, we see that uh, in the reactions, you see that they were all saying, "Hey, they are they are speaking in our language. They are talking about the wonderful works of God." So they were earthly languages but also in the same uh, passage you see that some are saying that uh, they, you know they are drunk right they are drunk they are mocking them okay um, and we also see in 1 corinthians 13 okay so um, maybe you can turn there 1 corinthians 13 and um, verse 1 uh, paul says though i speak with tongues of men and of angels okay so what is he saying uh, here? We know that he's actually talking about the gifts, gifts of the spirit. Okay, in Acts chapter thirteen, he's not talking about love, though he's he's going to talk about love, but it's in the context of the use of the spiritual gifts. Okay, we should always understand that because many times we see one Corinthians thirteen being read out, being preached on in weddings. You know most of the times right in weddings and then we realize okay this is a chapter on love yes it is but it the context is about the use of gifts okay how a believer how the church should have love in ministering the gifts okay so um so yeah he says though i speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have becoming i have become sounding brass or a clanging symbol okay so he's talking about tongues of men earthly language tongues of angels heavenly language okay so it is possible that um, uh, you know i i could be speaking an earthly language or i could speak a heavenly language um and uh, paul also says you know when i speak in a tongue um, my understanding is unfruitful okay where does he say that um he says um uh, sorry, uh, yeah, let me just look at that verse. Yeah, 1 Corinthians um, 13, 14 and verse 14. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So, so Paul is saying, you know, I pray in tongues, but, you know, I don't understand it. Okay, but there is something that is happening that is edification. Okay, so you don't understand. Um so which means that it's a heavenly language okay so it is possible so many times we say you know I, I need to understand what i'm praying yes the holy spirit will give you interpretation and that is called the gift of interpretation of tongues you know either for the tongues that we speak ourselves or maybe for you know someone else uh, who maybe gives an utterance in tongues and then there is the interpretation okay so um so that's the thing okay now we need to understand that there are varieties of tongues different kinds of tongues and uh, we will be learning about this you know i just want to mention it tongues for personal prayer right uh, which means that i pray in tongues and i'm being built up edified 1 corinthians 14 and uh, and it says um verse 2 it says for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to God, men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay, uh, verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So, you know, you're speaking the mysteries of God to your spirit. You're also being edified. Okay, tongues for personal prayer. So, in a personal prayer time, you're just praying and you do that. Okay, then we see tongues for interpretation. Okay. Uh, again, we see this in uh, chapter 14 and uh, verse 15. Um, um, he says, you know, uh, I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with, sorry, not, not chapter, uh, verse 5, sorry. Um, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. 
But he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So there is the tongues for interpretation, right? So I, I pray in tongues and I, and I give an utterance in tongues. I, you know, let's say I, right now I speak in tongues, okay? And there is the interpretation. Okay, there's into following the you know the the maybe uh, maybe a couple of sentences in tongues. There is the interpretation, and I and I speak uh, and I interpret that in English and saying this is what God says, you know, and that you know sometimes prophecy works that way, and prayer, you know, tongues intercession uh, also, you know. So there are different kinds of um, tongues. Um, tongues as a sign to the unbeliever, right? Uh, that like we saw in Acts chapter two. They all prayed. They all spoke with tongues. There were other Jews who were there from different languages, uh, you know, uh, speaking different languages. They understood suddenly, oh, this, this is my own language. And they are talking about the wonderful works of God. And they're all Galileans. And then they draw near. Peter prays. And they, and they get saved. Right? So as a sign for the unbeliever that something is you know, supernatural. And uh, it draws them to God. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, here's another question. Did Jesus speak with other tongues? Okay, so Jesus is our example, uh, but did Jesus speak in tongues? Now, the thing is, um, we we don't see a direct reference. We don't see a reference saying that, uh, you know, um, Jesus spoke in tongues. We don't see that, uh, but we see him manifesting the other gifts. Okay, but we do see that, uh, you know, the, that, um, portion that we saw this morning in our uh, mentoring session in Hebrews, um, which I think John referred to. Uh, which one was it, uh, John? Um, John, Hebrews 5, is it? Yes. 5, 7. Yeah, 5, 7, right? Um, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. So it talks about how Jesus prayed with vehement cries and uh, tears. And uh, and so with groanings, you know, vehement cries and uh, tears, he uh, he prayed. So we, that's, that's all we see about the description of how he prayed. Um, so we don't know. And uh, uh, but we, we, we know that God manifested you know the the signs and wonders and miracles, everything. You know we see in Hebrews two, uh, which says that um, uh, how can we escape if we neglect so great great a salvation? Hebrews two and verse three. How can we neglect uh, so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? He's okay, spoken by the Lord, confirmed to us by those who heard him. God bearing witnesses. Uh, sorry, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Okay, so uh, applicable to the Lord ministering, applicable to the disciples ministering as well. Okay, now there are other questions. Uh, uh, can the de devil understand when we speak in tongues, etc.? Uh, you can you can look it up, you know, you can go through it. Uh, but I just want to move to... Um, this um, section on, um, you know, to pray and to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, okay, to pray and receive. Um, so first thing that we need to understand is not, it's not the pastor, it's not the brother, sister who's laying hands and praying, uh, who is, uh, you know, giving, uh, you know, in a way, giving these gifts, whatever. You know. It is the Lord Jesus who baptizes us. Yes, he will use a human vessel, a human agent or a servant. Um, but it is the Lord Jesus who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Okay, John was very clear. He said, there's coming after me, one who's greater than me, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. The Lord Jesus himself he said, you wait and you will be endured with power from on high. So it is the Lord Jesus who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, right? So we, whom do we look to? Whom do we ask? Whom do we put our faith in? In the Lord Jesus, right? So when we ask him and when we pray to him, he pours out, right? He baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and with, uh, uh, and 
with the manifestation of the gifts, right? So that is something that is central, you know, uh, that is something that we put our faith in. And uh, and this is uh, this is a rock solid foundation. Okay, it is the Lord Jesus who is the baptizer, and so we look to Him. Okay. Um, second thing, and you know, you are a believer, right? You believe in the Lord Jesus, and you are praying to Him. And as He pours out His Spirit, you can pray in tongues. Now, you know, I prayed in tongues many years after i got filled with the spirit right many years because i didn't really venture out in faith uh, i had a i did not have the understanding right um so it was many years uh, i think maybe even eight years after i became a believer that i started praying in tongues but it need not be so for you know others right so as a believer you're a candidate for, to, for the baptism of the holy spirit and you are uh, you know, a candidate for the release of the gifts, which gifts which belong to the Holy Spirit, because He comes and He indwells and He baptizes, so you can pray with other tongues as well. And uh, you know, in Mark chapter sixteen, uh, the Lord Jesus commissioning, you know, uh, the disciples. We see in Matthew twenty-eight as well. In Mark sixteen, specifically about you know, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out. Um, the demons, the devils, they shall speak with new tongues. So, what is the candidate? What is the qualification? Those who believe. That's the only thing. It's not like so many years of experience or, you know, uh, so many good things or so much of knowledge of scripture, nothing at all. It just says, these signs will follow those who believe. Right? That's the only thing. Believe in who? Believe in the Lord Jesus. Right, and received him as Lord and Savior. So it 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 involves taking that step of faith. Okay. It's a gift, so we receive. There's no performance. It's a gift, free gift. Uh, so we receive by faith. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, Paul, when he's writing to the Galatian church, he uh, he in fact rebukes them, you know. He says, uh, 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 in several things, you know, you've started in the spirit. Now, do you want to, you know, uh, continue on in the flesh and so on? Uh, and um, here, you know, Galatians three thirteen says, uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now, the reason he redeemed us is that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, The promise of the Spirit, right? the promise of the Father, the, the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, one and the same, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. And what is required? Faith, that you believe. right? So um, sometimes people have fear because they have seen you know, maybe certain I don't know, certain people behaving in a strange way, weird way. So they, uh, you know, they, right from childhood, there's a fear. You know, I don't want that, right? Uh, uh, but then we need to understand to whom are we praying and who is the one who baptizes? Who is the one who blesses? It's the Lord Jesus, no one else, right? So we need not have any fear, right? So sometimes we'll have fear, you know, um, like I think I shared once, right? Uh, there's this friend of uh, ours who, who believe that, okay, what if what I'm praying is not of, you know, the Holy Spirit, but of the evil spirit? Fears like that. Well, uh, we are asking the Lord to fill us, and he's the one who baptizes. He's the one with the, all the authority. So, you know, uh, he will not make a mistake. Right? The Holy Spirit, uh, evil spirit, yes, can there be counterfeit? Yeah, of course. But for the ones who are being controlled by the evil spirit or given themselves to the holy to the evil spirit they are the ones who manifest in these kind of counterfeits right the you know speaking in tongues as controlled by the evil spirit so we don't have to worry about that um yeah so we are asking the lord uh and yeah the other thing is sometimes we plead and ask god you know big god god please do it lord do it lord uh, you know, I, I'm just asking you, begging you, please, I will be a good boy, I'll be a good girl. You know, we don't have to convince God. We don't have to, you know, plead with him. 
we just have to thank him uh, and uh, and believe and uh, be, and receive okay here we have a question uh, from Isaac can someone be filled with the Holy Spirit without being baptized okay so I guess you're talking about water baptism if you're referring to that yes uh, a person can be like we saw um, in the case of uh, Cornelius's household where uh, the believers were baptized in the Holy Spirit they started praying in tongues and then Peter leads them to baptize them in water Right, so yes, it is possible um, if you're referring to water baptism, right? But otherwise, being the infilling of the spirit, the baptism of the spirit, you know, one and the same. We see that uh, you know uh, in Acts chapter two, uh, referring to um, the uh, being baptism being referred to as being filled with the spirit. Okay. Um, okay. Then we see that the Holy Spirit gives the language, but we must speak. Uh, like the other thing is that the Holy Spirit is the one who um, who gives us the language, who gives us the words. Words we know are made of sounds, and so we pray that out. Okay. A simple prayer is this. Okay. Here is uh, something that we can pray. Um, Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a believer. I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit so that I can receive power to be a witness for you. Heavenly Father, I ask in Jesus' name, please pour out your spirit on me as you promised you would do in the last days. By faith, I now receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is now upon me and all his gifts are resident with him in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And because I'm a believer, I now speak with new tongues as the Spirit gives me the ability. I expect the flow of all other gifts of the Spirit through my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Right. A simple prayer that you can pray in the quietness of wherever you are and begin to um, uh, pray in, in tongues. Okay, So... Um, Okay, we'll we'll stop here, and I just want uh, you know us to just pray for a moment, and um, and for those of us who have not yet started praying in tongues, you know, uh, take that step of faith, right? Um, even as we pray and ask the Lord to fill us with the Spirit, to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. For those of us who are not yet, you know, maybe you desire it and you've not yet started um, you can take that step of faith you know understand that you can speak only one language at a time right so if you're praying in in a known language or thanking god in a known language you know you're saying thank you lord praise you um, i give thanks and it's a known language i'm praying in english so you stop and and the words that you are sensing in your heart okay in your spirit the sounds that you're sensing in your spirit you know, there will be a stirring, there will be a sensing in your spirit, just like how we saw, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in our spirit. You give voice to that and loud enough so that you can hear, okay, loud enough so that you can hear and uh, you'll begin to pray in other tongues. Okay, it's as simple as that. So let's pray. I think we have, oh, we have uh, already 10.50. Okay, let's, let's pray and then we'll, um, I'll just lead you in that prayer. Father God, I just Thank you, God. We, we come before you now in faith and we call upon your name, Lord. Lord, you are the baptizer. And so, Lord, I ask that you will baptize us with your Holy Spirit, each one of us with your Holy Spirit right now. And may the gifts of the Spirit be released in us. And I just pray, God, that those who have not yet begun to start praying in tongues will begin to do so even as you give them utterance, Lord. We thank you. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Now just begin to thank him. And, um, you know, you might feel something. You may not feel anything. That's fine. Just, just go ahead and thank the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for filling me with your Holy Spirit. And, uh, yeah, for those of you who have not yet begun to pray in tongues, maybe you can just take a step of faith and 
you know, if it's possible, we just take a step of faith and and speak out, pray out in tongues as um, the words that you sense in your spirit, just speak it out. Okay. You know, now sometimes it could be just one syllable. Just no problem. Just speak it out. Maybe start out by speaking in one syllable. So no problem. Right? You just speak out that syllable in faith. And then the language would continue to expand as you begin to you know, pray in the Spirit and continue in the Lord. Right? Okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time. In your word, in your presence, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm sure you might have more questions. We'll catch up next class. Um, okay, thank you. God bless. See you.